Presenting Audi e-tron Sportback Quattro 55, which is Audi's top-of-the-line EV with 90 kilowatt hour battery. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Nash from Tesla and the Gong. I must first thank ev.com.au for arranging this car via your drive in Sydney for me to review. A massive thanks also goes out to my mate Pete of Way Too Old For This for helping me on both days that I had the car with me. As you know, my daily drive is a Tesla Model X, so this review will be in the eyes of a Tesla Model X owner and user, but I'll try and keep it as unbiased as possible to be fair. So in the first half of the video, we'll see the physical attributes of the car, both interior and exterior. We look at the UI or user interface. We look at Audi's home charging solution. And last, we look at DC fast charging, its speed and calculated range of the car at 100% state of charge. There are chapters for each of this, so you can skip ahead if you're looking for a particular feature or segment. Okay then, let's jump right in. The front profile of the car is familiar and a hallmark of Audi cars past and present. Let's do a quick walk around. It is definitely a good looking car and it is something you'd expect of Audi. The sloping rear third of the car on side profile gives the car a sporty look. Sport back, sporty look. The rear of the car is also aggressively styled. These day images do not do justice so I tried to grab some night images of the tail lamps and they look quite lovely. The single most distinguishing feature is the side view mirrors or lack thereof which are being replaced by these cameras on either side. More on these in the interior segments of this video. So how would one charge these e-trons you ask? Well on the driver's side is the first of the two charging doors. Opening this reveals the type 2 charger port and another flap is there which needs to be opened to reveal the CCS2 port like so. This I presume is the main charging port of the two because this has the CCS2 for DC fast charging. On the passenger side is the second of the two charging doors. Opening this shows a single type 2 port. There is no CCS2 port on this side. This is a standard Audi key fob, a double tap opens the boat. Car is a 5 seater with a 3 2 configuration and a reasonable sized boot. You can also add a parcel shelf like so. You can even cover the glass so that people cannot see what is inside the trunk. You can see that the boot or the trunk is reasonable sized but you can actually lift up the flap and reveal a sub trunk right there. And this is something which the Tesla does not have. The car comes with these run flat tires which are rated at 80 km per hour. And there is another smaller cubby hole where you can probably place a couple of grocery bags or a couple of bottles of milk. It's not too deep but it's definitely there and it adds to the boot size as well. So we can't lift it away. We have to use that latch. This is latch which opens the trunk. And um, it's not completely covered, so you can see all the, uh, the equipment there, the, the connections, the converters, the, the, the electrical lines. And this is all the space that we have. This is just a rattly door. You can see it's just rattling. And this is all the space that we have uh, in the front trunk. Now, Let's jump right in. The side view mirrors have been replaced by these high resolution cameras and screens and they are a cool touch. But having driven the car for 24 hours, I must say it needs a little getting used to. Cause for years we've been looking at a particular spot as reassurance that there are no lurking dangers around the car and now having to look even a wee bit lower needs more effort to be conditioned in. My question is, what will happen if we have to go back to cars with side view mirrors again? Now, the fit, finish and quality of materials is awesome. It does scream luxury. The leather, plastics, fit and stitching is splendid. Something 
you would definitely expect of Audi. But this steering wheel has way too many buttons. Coming off the Tesla stables, I like the minimalist look better but having said that, for an existing Audi owner looking to move to an EV, this will look and feel familiar and I guess that's what they went for so that they will feel right at home in an e-tron. e-tron does not have a panoramic glass roof like the Teslas but it does have a standard moon roof. Now how does one start the car? Well, you press on the start button, complete relic of the ice car era. There are multiple high resolution screens galore inside this car. This is the dash screen with the instrument cluster reminding one of Audi's existing ice fleets which again would be a familiarity feature I suppose. The center console has two screens which are both touchscreen of course. I still prefer the 17 inches large ported orientation in a Model X and Model S. One can count six screens in the car, two in the center console, the third one behind the steering wheel which is the dash screen, two for either one of the side view mirrors and there is one more for the rear passengers to access these controls here behind these air vents. The center aisle is reminiscent of ICE vehicles that Audi makes. It is well appropriated, it has the cup holders, small cubby holes to keep knickknacks, the 12 volt charger, the whole works but because it's so large it does take a fair volume of the internal space of the car. Interiors take an all new look at night when the accent lights come on. I must say it looks very beautiful. When the indicators are turned on, there is a light which is at the corner of the screens on each side depending on which indicator is activated. Quite beautiful. Okay, so these doors have a full frame which is, which is nice and sturdy. It's okay, it's, it's very good and, it, uh, and the satisfying thump that the, the door makes. That's really cool. That's really good. Now, with regards to the rear door, same traditional rear door with frame. With regards to the rear passenger, it sort of sits on, an, on, a, on a small little platform and you can't put your feet underneath the, the uh, um, seats and there's a small ridge there as well. And this sits in a small little well. And the middle passenger has barely any space. You can see that there's barely any space for the middle passenger to sit. And the middle passenger also has a small little ridge there because there is a armrest. Okay, this is not too bad. There's ample space for, for my knees. The space in front is not too bad. But when I move here, and because this, can you, can you get this? Because I can't place my, my foot there, I have to place my feet on either side. And this is an uncomfortable position to sit down. It's, in a, it's a bit of a height here as well. This is a very uncomfortable position to sit down. I'm not sure uh, if it'll be suited for anybody more than it's a small child. I'm going to state this bluntly. I am not a fan of this UI. There are multiple submenus making this a confusing and complicated UI to use at best of times and things are compounded by the lack of accuracy of the touch interface. I do understand that our Teslas do have touch interface as well but there are not many sub menus to go through and most of the important settings are centrally located making access to them easy like in iOS or in your Android OS. Here is a case in point, a simple action of finding and navigating to a spot is quite cumbersome here. And here is a quick demo. Okay, now let's look at this UI. Uh, this dual screen setup is a little cumbersome to use and I'll demonstrate uh, what I mean. Now again, I'm going to preface this by saying that I'm coming from uh, a Tesla uh, where everything is quite straightforward. Uh, there's no uh, multiple submenus. Uh, if at all there's a submenu, it's just one step deep. Here there are submenus which are a couple of steps deep to even, get, even to get to uh, simple things. And uh, one of the most important things that an EV owner would want to know is how to get to a charging station, like an, a DC fast charger. So let's do that. Let's navigate from Wollongong. So I've parked, I'm not, I'm not driving right now. So let's uh, do that. Let's go to navigation and um, let's search. Uh, once you hit on search, it says 
uh, already charging stations and I was quite uh, interested uh, and impressed that it says charging station at the very top. Uh, of course in uh, Tesla we have all the charging stations listed under a single icon inside the maps um, app let's say charging stations and it shows me some of the charging stations here in uh, Wollongong so you can see uh, there are DC fast chargers um, uh, the Shell Cove charger is, is here we tried to go to Shell Cove charger yesterday unfortunately um, it was not working uh, so I couldn't go there uh, but um, the Seven Hills charger is obviously not here okay we can give it the benefit of doubt um, to uh, Tesla saying that okay it's brand new it's only open uh, for a week now so uh, it's probably not yet populated in the map fine let's try the uh, the app and find the station now if I put a DC fast charger and leave it like so and I'm going to try and write this so I'm going to say seven, seven. and then space, space. hill So it's very cumbersome to write this now if you thought oh no Nash you can actually um, dictate this and then it will take you to the seven hills uh, uh, EV charger let's try that what are you looking for EV fast charger Pardon? Please say the search term. DC fast charger, seven hills. Could you say that again, please? DC fast charger, seven hills. On the screen, I've displayed the things you can say. Say correction if you'd like to go back a step. So that is a little difficult. It's, it's very difficult to get uh, the, the fast charger. So what I had to do is I had to find the address separately and then enter it in. So this is 38 Abbott um, Road, I think. So let's do, we can actually type that in as well. Even that is not very intuitive uh, when you are sitting in the car and you really want to get to a place. Let's say um, A double B O double T Road. Um... Abbott Road, Seven Hills. So, so that's where we want to go. So let's click on that. Uh, it does not recognize it as a charger, but I, I'm sure it will come to it uh, in, in just a bit because uh, um, uh, because it's a brand new charger. We'll give that the benefit of doubt. So it's 126 kilometers from here and I have 161 kilometers range. So if everything goes well, I'll go at a low state of charge so that we can test this EV charger in just a bit. Oh. Battery not sufficient, it says. Why would that say that? Okay. We'll say, where else do you want to take me? It's asking me to go to the Ulangong University and plug for an hour and 11 minutes. And then go off to Abbott Road. Oh, this is impossible. Okay, now, if I don't do this, let's say I go somewhere else. Um cancel this and search again and then charging stations and switch to searching current location Mittagong. so let's say if I want to go to the uh, Defries charger which is only 90 kilometers away I say replace destination. The route is being calculated. A how to charge session is coming right up, so don't go anywhere. While you're at it, a sub to the channel will be highly appreciated. Now, another interesting feature is the heads up display. I really wish it comes in our Teslas as well, it'll be quite nice. This is a demo of the 360 degree view around the car when one is trying to park. Now just like those side view mirrors, this does need a little getting used to as well. Now take it away Nash.
Home AC charging is via the included mobile charger which plugs to a 10 amp plug. I'm sure you can install and charge via available three phase chargers in the market. Unfortunately, Audi does not have an included three phase charger. And I know that in the recent times, Tesla does not include one either. Let's go. Yes. Hello guys, we're here at the Chargebox chargers. This is the um, Zetlitz charger, East Village um, CCS2, ultra rapid. And to open the charge port, we have to press on this button. It opens there. And there is one more port we have to flip down so that gets you the CCS2. And then there you go, you plug that in like so. The connection, the handshake is made there um, and uh, we're ready to go. We're going to tap on the app and start charging. Uh, we are ready to go. So I have the RFID and as you know, the Audi actually comes with, uh, uh, if I remember right, four years worth of uh, free credits from ChargeFox and this is the RFID card. Once the connection is made, you have to just tap the RFID. Yeah. Okay, Audi is starting to charge now. This is 17%. 18%, 135, 140 kilowatts, 140 kilowatts and holding stable. Okay, at, uh, at the end of five minutes, we've put in 31% of charge. Reaching the 20 minute mark, we have come to 72%. Uh, 152 at peak, so we come to 152 kilowatts. That's pretty good. So that is 93% at 30 minutes. Now that is 100% of charge at 36 minutes. We're gonna jump in and see what the 100% charge actually means. So once you finish charging, we had to press on that and that would release the plug. And then you take it out and then put it away. Okay, now we know that 100% gives you 401 kilometers. Now 401 kilometers does not mean you can travel for 400 kilometers because everything in an electric vehicle is uh, running on electricity, obviously. Duh. And that's why uh, we need to understand that this 401 kilometers will also include the AC, the, uh, the radio that you run, if you're running apps, if you're running anything else, if you're having LTE, the whole works, everything is 401. So 401 is just the estimated range that the car can do but if you have air conditioning on, so let's say I'm going to turn on the air conditioner. Put it to max. As soon as I put the, uh, the air conditioner to max, you see what happens? 361 it says. The air conditioning is at max now. And it says 361 kilometers. Now watch what it's doing. I'm going to turn off the air conditioner. And it becomes 401 again. So that's the estimated range. So everything runs on the battery. So don't be fooled by uh, just these numbers. It's not 401 kilometers that you can drive. There you go, folks. This is my first look and review of the Audi e-tron. Now I do have a few more Audi e-tron related videos coming up very soon. I have a Model X versus e-tron comparison, including range and efficacy comparison. Do look out for that. I'll leave a link in the description of this video as soon as it drops, as well as in the top right corner. A subscription to the channel will be massively appreciated. And if you like this video, please do click on that like button as well. Also smash that bell icon so that you can get notifications of my new videos as soon as they drop. If you're on the lookout to buy one of the Tesla cars, kindly consider using my referral code. It'll help another Aussie get into an EV sooner. Until I see you guys in another interesting video very soon, this is Nash from Tesla The Gong, signing off. Peace.